So today's session also, we will work on the same visual. Now, what we did yesterday, just to do a quick recap, we understood about functional areas. We understood about domains, subdomains, and the policies, the child policies that comes with it, right? And we looked into the emergency contact domain. We opened up, we actually looked at the contact information functional area. Let's just go back in the tenant and review those. So we run the report functional area. Gives you about 100 plus items. Then we filter it on contact information. Oh, something, okay, that's here. We filter it on the contact information. We opened it up in a new tab. And even just from this visual as well, we can see that what this function area is about, what are the different domains, what are the different business processes that has, right? So we opened up this particular function area. We read through it, what is the description? It's enabled, it has these domains, it has these business processes. Now let's say we opened up a particular type of, a particular domain, there's no types. In no types and domains, I'm sorry, a particular domain, which is emergency contacts. We looked into this, we looked at the description. We see that there are subdomains as well. That means this will have some child policies as well. It has about 86 secured items. Then we navigated to the domain security policy of it, where our actual work lies. This is where we actually, as workday consultants, as security administrator, we'll make any changes, right? By editing the permissions. You have these securable actions, you have these securable items. This, these will mostly be unique for most domains, but there will be some common ones as well. For example, uh, a phone number can be in a contact information and also in personal data domain. So it's not that it's completely unique. There are fields, there are actions which can be found in different domains as well. That's absolutely okay. But nobody is asking you to remember all this, right? You just need to be very familiar in the navigation of the domain security policies. And once you reach the domain security policy, what you have to do next is update these groups, add and remove, give them the view or modify access. Right? Now, this is a very lengthy way of navigating. Let's say if you just want to navigate to a domain security policy. Is there an easier way? Is there a shorter way? Yes, there is. Right, And uh, <clears throat> there are a few reports which you can run directly from the search bar and reach at a different view, though it will show you the same thing, but in a different view, right? So those reports are called as domain security policies for functional area. There's one for domains, there's another one for business process. We'll work with domain security policies for functional area first. We run this report, it asks you for a functional area. Now, why I didn't show you this in the beginning, because if you don't know what a functional area is, how would you learn this report? Now you know what function areas are. We'll go with the contact information. Now it gives you a very nice view, a very well-structured view of the policies. You see on the left-hand side, you have all these folders. That means these all are parent domains, which will have some subdomains. All these one without folder, that means they are independent domains. They are not parent, they don't have any child. They just have, these are just domains, right? This is a view which I personally very well 
like because it's easier to navigate. Let's say if I'm looking finding for a particular domain on home content, I can just go here and see and open up that these are the other subdomains that are part of it. Right? If I open person data name, it again has few of these. Right? So more structured way, I don't have to navigate to each and every policy on a different tab. I can just navigate it from here. In our case, we are working with emergency contact. And these are the two different subdomains, which I'd say sub -pol child policies, emergency contact home address, emergency contact work address, which is exactly the same here. Emergency contact home address and emergency contact work address. <coughs> All right. So to change anything for this parent domain, I'll navigate to the parent domain policy, which is this one. I'll go to the related actions, this one, and edit permissions. That's one way to do. Another way is if you go all the way to the bottom, here, you will see this option of edit permissions. You can run this task as well. It will bring you to the same page. I'll cancel it for now. I won't make any changes. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. When we talk about child policies, let's say if I navigate to a child policy, you will not just see one option, you will see two options, use parent permissions or edit permissions. If I navigate to, let's say this one, self-service, I'll only see edit permissions because this is a parent policy. But if I open up any of the child policy, I get the parent permissions option as well. But be very cautious in using this because not all domain and subdomains have the same security set up or same security groups being part of that. So that was a quick recap on the domain security policies. Any questions anyone has? Okay, let's go to the next part of it. Now we understood this section on the domain security. Mm. Now the next part is business process. Now, in order to understand this, let's just quickly understand what a business process is. Any action which is leading to a particular purpose you're doing those set of actions to fulfill a business objective or a business goal is a business process by the name itself if you break it down business and process a process is nothing but a set of actions which helps you achieve a business objective so the name business process right now <coughs> Uh, so there are many reports which are worked and delivered, which you can run, which you can learn a lot about business processes. But I'm not sure how much time this report will take. Okay. So you see there are about 310 items, which is very less than it should be, but uh, there are a lot in nature. So a few examples, if I talk about, uh, I'll filter it here. So bio. These are the four primary business processes that any, any workday HCM consultant, I'm specific to an HCM consultant, should know about for sure. 
If you're a finance consultant, it's okay if you don't know about this. If you're a time tracking expert, it's okay if you don't know about these. But if you're an HCM person, you should know, you must know about these. Not that uh, Workday says that, Workday says so, but based on my experience, based on all the projects that I've worked, if you know these, you have a better edge over others, right? But our topic is not to go in detail on the business processes. Our topic is to understand the security of it, right? So let's say if I pick up onboarding, right? Now onboarding by the name itself is um, a process which allows new hires to enter all the necessary information on the first day of their hire or before they are hired, basically, you know, for example, complete their federal withholding connection, so specific to the US. This one as well, veteran status, again, specific to the US. Payment elections is where you add in your bank details for your salary to be credited. Edit government IDs used all across uh, different countries. Self-identification of disability, again, specific to the US, again, specific to the US. Change emergency contact, used everywhere. Change benefit elections, mostly in the US, right? So you see that there is a series of steps in a particular order a b b1 c c1 d d1 so on and so forth e f g all right and each of these step like the first one is an initiation that means it initiates the process the second one is of type action that means a particular action needs to be taken and that action is this and this particular group employ as self which means a new hire automatically gets assigned to this group, which is called as employee as self, would be the one taking that action. And in this case, it will be mostly employee as self, and most of it are action items, right? The types, there are more, there are different types other than action, like report, tasks, et cetera, et cetera. Right? But the understanding of business process is a series of steps in a particular order, which help you achieve a business objective, right? Now, this business process is not something that anyone can go in and run. You need to have the right security for that, right? So let's um, go back to that particular report that we just ran. And let's take example of since we are talking about emergency contact, let's just talk about that, okay? Just take that as an example. Now change emergency contact is a business process. It might be smaller than the onboarding one, but let's see what do we have in there. Okay, so this is just an initiation step. That means whoever initiates it, that marks the completion of that step as well. Right. But not everyone can go in and initiate an emergency contact change. Right. So if I'm an if I'm an end user, I cannot go into my colleague's profile and initiate a change of emergency contact for their profile. That is not at all legal or ethical at the same time. Right. It makes sense for me to change the emergency contact for myself. Right. But I should not have access to change emergency contact for anyone else outside my profile. Even if I'm a manager, am I reporting five, five, six people uh, <clears throat> reporting to me? That does not mean I have the access to change their emergency contact. It makes sense for me as a manager to have the view ability that will come from the domain. If I have to view someone's emergency contact, I should be part of a domain, which gives me access to look at the emergency contact. In case of a manager, yes, it makes sense that in case of an emergency, I should know that this is their emergency contact. I should be quickly navigate into the system and pull out their emergency contact. But in no circumstances, even as a manager, I should have access to change it, right? 
only someone in the HR, like with a superior access or something, should be allowed to do that apart from the employee. Right? So who dis not I won't say who decides, but how do we see where is the security for these business processes is in the business process security policies. The same way we had for domains, you need to be member of a domain security policy. Likewise, you have to be member of a business process security policy. Navigate to the business process policy and let's go in the view mode. Now, this is how a business process security policy looks like. There are different sections, sections and subsections. This is a view business process security policy. You see, it is a lot different the way domains are. This is a domain security policy, but the concept remains the same. Over here, you have these security groups. In the business process, you have security groups in these sections. The concept remains the same. Now, talking about different sections and subsections, right? So, so every business process will have this parent section which is who can start the business process which is asking you that please tell us that which particular security groups should be able to start or initiate the business process and in the subsection it says it's an initiating action for change emergency contact description from related actions which means if you navigate to a user let's say if i open a new tab if i navigate to a user change from If I go back, read it again, it says change emergency contact from the related actions. The way you read it is, this is the action which is called as change emergency contact from related action, right? The related actions is this. And you go to your personal data, change emergency contact. So if you have the right security, you will be able to see this, else no. Okay, and these are the security groups and 178, which is not realistic. You will not have more than five or 10 groups here. 10 is also, it's a lot. Like it will mostly be employee self, firstly, because they can change it, but you don't need, you don't even need to add them here because the next part has it. But here you would have someone like an HR admin or a business process admin or like someone at a superior HR role who should have access to this or someone in the identity, I won't say identity. But someone who should know, like who should have access to the emergency contact in your organization. Yes, Abhishek, go ahead. Uh, hi, Rohan. Uh, Rohan, this security groups, okay. Uh... I mean, some of these could be pre-existing standard provided by Workday, and some of these could be like, which we have to build it based on client requirement. How is it like, uh, uh, how this works? I mean, when we are when we are seeing here 178, these in real, real time scenarios, it would be like four or five, that means uh, based on a customer's requirement, we'll be working on the permissions and then based view those permissions will be adding into you know that one specific group and we'll be renaming that group so you don't need to rename anything uh, and you correctly said it that um, there will be work that delivered groups there's a big list of that work that delivers a lot of groups which uh, at least help you get started with the basics of security but let's say you want to have a security group with some modified security permissions, all right? 
in that case also you will never have 178 groups you will only have four or five max right which you can use here so yes workday delivers its own groups if that those groups satisfy your requirements you can use them exactly the same way else you can create your own security groups and use it as and when needed yeah, so yes so one, i i wanted to understand for example if you see this uh, two sdmav senior hr partner this is one group and this group will have some specific permissions added within, within it correct okay so where we create this this group i mean uh, we'll here, we'll... okay we'll okay 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 so like i said that in this visual you see we first understood the function area now we okay. have the security policy the next mm -hmm. is security groups okay okay Fine. so we'll we'll actually create like not the policies or the domains we'll create everything here once we understand all the concept all the links from right to left mm -hmm. then our hands on will start from left to right okay yeah that's that's okay yeah, yeah. because i'll i have i'll go slow i'm going slow on this uh, every day we'll cover one part and one day and in the last two sessions of this topic we'll do complete hands on so that is when uh, like i said right now we are going from right to left once we we'll start going from left to right most of your questions will already be answered by me so uh, we are at the initiating action for change emergency emergency contact related actions right so how does this work like let's say you are part of the security group right you have that means that you can initiate the change emergency contact process if your security group if the security group that you are part of is not listed here then you cannot initiate it that is how it works okay now the subsection 2 I, i won't number it but another subsection it's change my emergency contact and how do we read it the action is change my emergency contact from employee self service right now what is this I'll show you that james brown employee so if i proxy in as an employee you will have a contact point like a contact panel and in the emergency contact this is where you will do it right now there is nothing added if there was added you will see a button like edit like you have it here you will see instead of add you will see a button called as edit so this is what it means by change emergency contact from employee self service mail right. another type or another category is change emergency contact web services these web services are nothing but eibs or data loads which use business processes in the back end so all the eib data loads that we do the bulk loads that we do which is also one of the topics in the end of the course uh, all these actually run these business processes in the back end when these processes have to be web service enabled in order to be used for an eib so if you are part of a security group that should be listed here to run this particular process and then change emergency contact from sub event to hire and onboarding that means if hire or onboarding business processes which are usually big and lengthy <clears throat> if they have change emergency contact as a sub process in one of their steps and if your security group is listed here that means you will have access to initiate it from there as well or be able to process it right clear emergency contact this is another task if you have access to it you can do that and like in this case if i go here go to person data you should have something as clear emergency contact 
I don't think this user that I'm logged in has the security groups added here. So that's why they don't have this, right? So likewise, we saw that in this particular main section, we have all these different subsections. It's not important that every business process will have the same set of sections or subsections. The parent sections will always be there, like who can start the business process or who can do the actions, but these might change based on what business process is. Let's say that business process is nowhere to be used for a data load, then you won't have this section. Let's say that process does not have any employee self-service option, then you won't have this section. You might have a different section. So with experience, the more you navigate to these processes, the more policies you look at, the more exposure you get to, right? Now, another parent process, which is who can do actions on the entire business process, right? Now, actions on the entire business process means, if I let me open this in a new tab. Oh, shit. All right, so let's say if I'm looking at James Brown. Right. So I'll go to the contact information, emergency contact and add. I'll just add for the testing purpose. I'm just adding random values here. So we have added a contact information. Now, if I look at the worker history here, we'll see an event of change emergency contact with this particular employee. If I open this, I can see that this process was initiated as of today on today's date, et cetera, et cetera, by this user, right? So now this is my process here, change emergency contact. Now, whatever actions, if I read this statement again, which says, who can do actions on entire business process. Entire business process means the business process as a whole, right? That means if I go to the related actions, the options that I get, like process manually, resend, oh, let me proxy in as Logan because this person did not have the access. Job section, go to the worker history. Here I have my emergency contact. If I go to the related actions, there will be some options, some actions that I'll see. Oh, it's still not. Even Logan is not contact. Okay. So I only see a rescind action. Let me see if there are other. In this case, we get another one. We see a correct, a rescind. Let me see if there is another one. Okay. 
So again, we have a rescind, we have a correct option, right? So there are three, primarily three types of actions. One is this one, cancel, rescind, Correct is not, that's okay. Oh, there's no option for correct. That's why we are not getting it, right? But primarily what this section is telling us that these are all the different actions that you can do on the entire business process. Like view all, it'll give you access to all these steps that someone is running. Like I can open this process or let's say if I open the higher process, here it's only one step oh, that's crazy go back and let's see if we have another process which we can take an example of this process we have completed so usually a process will have more steps than one I think we're just picking up an example which only has one step, but uh, and there are more steps, then you will get to see that list if it's you have access here in the view all. View completed only, that means there are some steps in the business process which should be marked as complete. That is where they get access to. Approve. This is specific to, let's say, emergency contact had an approval step. Someone initiates it and it goes for an approval. And if it comes to you, then you should have the approve access. This is where you get access to. Ad hoc approve, if you want more people to be approving that transaction dynamically, like in real time, that is where you get. Now, cancel. Cancel happens on transactions which are in progress. In this case, if I go to worker history, all these processes are completed. There is no in-progress event. Let's say I initiate an in-progress event for James Brown. <clears throat> I'm gonna initiate a process, a random process, which I know will have definitely some approvals.
GM services is performed. We did add the company logo. GM services in So we did initiate the process. Now we don't need to complete it. You see there's a data change process which says the status is in progress. Now in this case, I won't get a rescind option like the other ones. Like in this case, I get a rescind option and a correct option, right? I have a rescind, not a correct because there's no correct option for that. But maybe in this case, have a correct and a rescind. So rescind <clears throat> is an action which you can take on successfully completed transactions. Please make note of these. Rescind is where if a process is completed, if a particular transaction is completed and you want to reverse it, rescind means reversal of the complete action that you have done. You will get a rescind option. But if that process is not completed as and is in progress. In that case, you won't get a rescind option. Instead, you will get a cancel option. If I go here, you see there is no rescind, there is cancel. So the difference between rescind and cancel is rescind is applicable only for completed transactions versus a cancel is applicable for in progress transactions though both of them do the same thing. If I cancel it, that means it will reverse any action that I've done so far. Rescind also reverses everything. But one more difference in cancel and rescind is that, let's say this data change process, okay, has few more sub-processes, like a change in compensation, or change emergency contact as part of this data change. For example, if I cancel it, there may be a possibility that it does not cancel the sub processes in the parent process. But 
in case of rescind it's a 100% surety that all the sub processes will also be cancelled or vis via rescinded so i'll repeat in case of cancel there may be possibilities it's not a 100% case that if you have a process which has sub processes if you cancel it mid flight which is if it's an in progress the sub processes may or may not be cancelled or reversed but if a process is completed you have the rescind capability and that process has sub processes then definitely all the processes including the sub processes will also be rescinded all right and the last piece of it is the correct option the correct option it is mostly for changing the effective date of that particular transaction if i show you here go to the correct it does not allow much modification that does not mean that you can change uh, anything and everything about it but it's mostly used to change an effective date let's say i want to change this to october 1st i can do that i am allowed to change few other details as well but not everything you see i don't have the ability to change any compensation information or any organization details for for that matter right so usually correct is used whether the process is completed or not completed it's mostly used to correct the effective date or some smaller details on a process right so these are certain actions like cancel we talked about cancel talked about rescind correct is not applicable to this process that's why we don't get it you will see request reassignment reassign task and deny for all the processes that's common that's not that and these are just policy restrictions that means if you want the process to be allowed for delegation there is something called as work to delegation which allows you to delegate your task in your absence that means someone is taking the action on your behalf right if you want to hide the comments usually we don't do that we keep the comments it's a good practice we don't disable them as well i don't know what this means unrestricted escalation so the primary piece or the most important understanding is <clears throat> where exactly do you enter the security groups and what access you will get now if i talk about another business process for example this is a process for change job right so if i open up this process you will see diff another parent section other than who can start the business process and who can do the actions on the entire business process let me show you another business process policy for a different process change job no two business process policies will be the same they can be but in most cases there will be some differences because every business process has a unique purpose no two processes do the same thing they might do similar things but not the same you can see who can start the business process right you have other options this is a big process so that's why you'll see a lot of them but what i wanted to show you is there's another parent section which is called who can do action steps usually we get a lot confused between this one versus this one the difference is very simple when it says who can do actions on the entire business process that means process as a whole like process is running what you can do to that process you can approve you can rescind you can cancel you can correct you can deny now this one it says who can do action steps in the business process this is very important in this is on right that means this is related to particular steps within the business process right so if i open up this business process in a new tab uh or uh, one second I think I can close the domain ones just to keep the tab clean. Right. 
I'm navigating to the business process definition through an easier way because the tenant has many definitions. So I don't want to get into the chaos of that. So I'm just going to navigate my process through here. Right. So you will see that in this particular business process, there are a lot of steps and a lot of those steps are of type action. You see, action, action. So this particular part, which says, who can do action steps in the business process? This is relevant to these ones. And you see there are security groups here, manager, analyst. I can only add these security groups uh, only if I have those added here based on uh, what action we are talking about. Let's say this is a review chain job. Do we have a review chain job anywhere? We don't have that. We have, oh, we have review receiving manager, which goes to the manager. Let's see, do we have that? You see, we have review receiving manager with some description. Now that manager security group must be here in order for that to, if, so first you enter the manager here, you set up the security policy then only you can add them here else you won't get to add them here you see there's another called as change organization assignment let's see where that is oh okay got it not every action steps would be listed here because because very important aspect this is a business process in itself so basically this would become a sub process. So in order to navigate to the security of this, I'll have to open up this process. I'll have to see this process in a different tab to see the security for this. I cannot see the security of this process. Let me again open up a new tab. I cannot see the process or I cannot see the security of this in the parent security in the parent process security. This is a sub process. But if I look at this proposed compensation change, that will also be not here because again, this is a sub process again. So let's see PP change organization assignment. Oh, okay. I'll have to navigate. Oh, one second. <clears throat> if you want to find the default definition, always run this report. Business process types with default definitions in use and filter for the business process that you're trying to find. You don't have to use this in real world much like we're doing it here because in real world, you won't have many, many change organization assignments, many different versions of this. I'll open up another one. Propose composition. Okay. Add the filter. Let me open up this one first. So this change organization assignment, I'll close this, <clears throat> is what we see here, right? To look at the security of this, I have to open this and look at the security of this process. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go to the related actions. I'll go to the policy, look into the view mode. And this is where I'll get that. You see, it should be who can initiate. Right now, it's only asking for the initiate access because you have to initiate this. Only initiate if there are no pending, right? In most cases, any sub processes that you're added, they're mostly asking to initiate the process, right? In this case, also propose compensation if employer and if is the worker and employer not initiated. We can come to these conditions later. But what I'm saying is mostly in initiation access. 
So I'll be able to see the security of a sub process only at that level of the process, not in the parent. Now let's say right now, if I change something here, I edit this definition as of today. I'll keep this tab. Oh, where is the policy for this? This is the policy, right? We only have managed business process. We have review chain job. We have the receiving manager and we have the review current manager. Already these groups add. Right? Now let's say if I have to add this step, review current manager in the process, I can do that very easily. A, B, C, D, I do a step D. You don't need to worry about what I'm doing right now. We have the complete business process topic for doing this, but I'm just talking in context of. So let's say I do add probation period, right? I, I won't be adding any security group here right now. I'll click OK. Oh, it's asking for this. So let me see uh, what security groups are allowed here. Let's say I'll just add this one. Picking up any security group, for example, right now. Now, if I navigate back to my security policy, let me see if that probation period is a process in itself. It's manage probation. I'm expecting my policy to be changed a little bit. If I go back to my process policy here, refresh the page. Now we get to who can do the action steps in the process. Let's see if we have that added. No, it did not get added. I think it's a business process in its own. So what I was trying to do is update this policy. And how can we do that is we can add more action steps in the process, which are not a business process of its own. I added this step E. This is a business process of it in its own, which is called as manage probation period. So that's where the security of it will be managed there. So your security policy decides who can take an action on the process, whether it's a sub process within a parent process, or if it's just a parent process in its own, or a independent process without any sub processes.